Hi, I'm Dr. Diana Stolba from Loomis Basin Equine Medical Center in Penryn, California, and I'm here today to talk about pigeon fever. The first thing we want to talk about is it's not the bird's fault. Pigeons actually have nothing to do with the life cycle of pigeon fever. It actually comes from the fact that a lot of times they get external abscesses on their chest and it causes swelling on their chest that makes them look like a bird. But in fact, it's a bacteria, Carinibacterium pseudotuberculosis. And that's a bacteria that typically enters via damaged skin, most likely a lot of times transmitted by flies. A lot of times the flies will take the bacteria to their ventral midline, um, get introduced into the bloodstream and end up traveling to a lymph node, either in their pectoral region or in their groin, uh, inguinal area, mammary glands, that sort of thing. The incubation period of pigeon fever is typically about three to four weeks, which is why we tend to see this clinical signs much later after the horse has actually been exposed. Pigeon fever is ubiquitous in the soil of California. In fact, um, it survives best in drought conditions, which is why we see so much of it here. It can survive in multiple soil types, uh, and typically we see it more in the late summer, early fall, after the horses have been kicking up a lot of dust, uh, and there may or may not be fly bites or wounds along their abdomen, and the flies introduce the bacteria that way. Um, and it unfortunately can survive in the soil for up to eight months, which we'll talk about a little bit later why it's so important to make sure that we prevent it from spreading or contaminating your property. Although again, like I said, it is ubiquitous in the soil, meaning that it is present on most properties naturally. The distribution of pigeon fever typically was thought to be a California type disease along the west coast but we're seeing um, usually it was California, Nevada, Utah. Lately there have been cases as far as Florida and throughout the United States so it's definitely getting more attention across the United States as not just a west coast disease. Clinical signs of pigeon fever are going to be things that you could look for at home. Most importantly uh, the horses typically are acting dull or have inappetence or weight loss. They can have a fever, which is typically over 101 degrees in horses, but not all cases will have a fever. That's important to note. Just because your horse does not have a fever does not exclude it from having uh, pigeon fever or carinibacterium. Most commonly, edema or swelling, like we talked about, that pigeon chest is the classic symptom that people see, but they can have swellings anywhere on their body related to where the abscess is. Lameness is typically related if it's near a limb. They can be quite sore walking. Um, and if it's an internal abscess, which we'll talk about, they can cause colic and or abortion in internal infection cases. There are three forms of pigeon fever. Most commonly, we talked about external abscesses. Those are the abscesses that occur in the pectoral region, um, along the body, on their ventral midline, and those are about 90% of the cases we see in horses, luckily. The, the internal infections are about 9% of horses, and that is usually something more serious, um, an abscess associated with their kidney, associated with their liver, or, or free in their abdomen. There's a very rare form, we only see in about 1% of horses, luckily, um, called ulcerative lymphangitis. Uh, and that is a pretty um, rough looking disease where there's lots of abscesses throughout their entire limb. Uh, there's a picture that you can see that shows how affected this horse is and you'll see lameness um, and sloughing of parts of their skin related to those multiple tiny abscesses. So diagnosis. One of your regular veterinarians from Loomis Basin Equine is going to come out and look at the clinical signs of your horse. The most important way or the most accurate way to diagnose it would be culturing the pus from inside the abscess. But before we get to that stage, sometimes the abscess hasn't matured enough and we'll see your horse earlier in the disease process. So we'll use blood work. They can have an elevated serum amyloid A, fibrinogen, or globulins, which are inflammatory protein markers that help us know that there is a bacterial infection within your horse's body. 
There's also a blood test um, specifically designed for pigeon fever, which is the synergistic hemolysis inhibition test. That's a great test for determining if the horse has an internal abscess, uh, but can be a little bit lower in external abscesses. So we use that in conjunction with clinical signs to determine what the risk is your horse is actually suffering from pigeon fever. And a lot of times we can use radiographs or ultrasound um, to see some of the deeper abscesses. For example, sometimes they'll form deep abscesses in their triceps muscles or places we can't see the swelling externally, but um, they have extreme lameness. So we can use all those diagnostics to help us determine if pigeon fever is going on in your horse. For treatment of pigeon fever, typically drainage of the abscess is the most effective, especially in external abscesses. If the horse has internal pigeon fever or like we talked about a very deep abscess that we can't get to, we will sometimes have to use long-term antibiotic treatment to get to that area. But if it's an external abscess, then we'll want to try to drain the pus. Like I talked about, sometimes they're not quite mature enough, so we'll have you use hot packs to bring the abscess to a head. After we can open and drain the abscess, we'll usually use ice or cold hosing to help comfort the horse. We use anti-inflammatories such as bute or banamine regularly to help with pain and decreasing the fever if they have a fever related to the disease. And then sometimes in cases we'll use antibiotics. Like I discussed, this is something you need to work with your veterinarian on closely because internal abscesses and ulcerative lymphangitis, it's very serious that they get on specific antibiotics to make sure we control the infection since it has such a th thick capsule sometimes it can be really hard to penetrate that abscess and get it treated. If it's a typical external abscess sometimes we won't recommend antibiotics based on the fact that um, once we drain the pus they'll usually heal on their own quite well. Uh, but a lot of times we have horses that have Cushing's disease or other metabolic diseases, um, older horses, or any reason why their immune system might be complicated, and we might think that that indicates antibiotics as well. So very important to work with your veterinarian closely on this and make sure that we make the right choice for your horse. Prevention. So this is important. Um, like we talked about in the beginning, it's not the pigeon's fault, it's actually flies. And so, in fact, the flies are the biggest way to prevent pigeon fever from affecting your horse. So making sure that if they tend to get sensitivity to flies, they wear a fly sheet. We use SWAT or fly spray regularly. Um, and then if you have an infected horse, typically you want to isolate them as best you can from the other horses. Not because it's contagious from horse to horse, but because um, if that abscess starts to drain pus, the bacteria can be picked up and then moved to another wound on another horse or a fly bite or that sort of thing. So fly prevention and control on your property is really important. And then again, as we talked about, it can live in the soil for eight months. So if your horse is draining pus onto the ground, um, if we can try to decontaminate that, if we can try to remove it, ideally we would put them on stall mats or somewhere where we can disinfect the entire area and get rid of the bacteria. Just a reminder, like I said, for the spread of disease, this is not a typical disease where we are worried about an entire barn becoming affected at once. Typically, it's because of the way the process works. They have to get introduced to the bacteria. It has to get into a wound. It has to go through the bloodstream and then set up shop somewhere. Um, and some horses won't actually get an infection or an abscess from it. So this is why um, we just try to isolate them, but it's not as contagious as some of the, some of the other bacterias, um, something like strangles or some of the more contagious diseases that we're worried about every horse on the property. Thank you for listening to me today. I'm hopefully I answered all of your questions about pigeon fever. Feel free to contact one of your regular veterinarians at Loomis Basin if you have any questions or you're concerned about your horse having clinical signs consistent with pigeon fever.